off-roading, old Florida back road driving, and out of the way food joints. That's what we're up to when we go back road stomping. Join this good old boy loving life by off-roading and back roads exploring one trail at a time. So get on in and buckle up, cause we're getting ready to roll. Welcome to our first episode of Backroad Stomping. In this show, we'll set out for adventure to a lot of cool places that Florida has to offer. We could be off-roading one week in a wildlife management area, a national forest, or a private off-roading park, to doing a casual drive on those old Florida back roads and seeing where the road takes us, just like we used to as kids in the back of mom and dad's old station wagon for those Sunday drives. We'll also talk to experts on different types of mods that we'll be doing on this Jeep, as it's a project in progress. And that isn't enough to squeeze into an episode, we will go over safety tips while on the trails and driving on those roads. And last, what isn't a good road trip or a day out on the trails without someplace good to eat? We'll stop somewhere and give a review, good or bad, to whatever back roads or eatery we roll up on. So that's the basis of what each episode will be about. This one we'll talk a little bit more about my Jeep, then we'll get out there riding. So I say let's get this adventure started. In 1992, I joined the U.S. Navy and during the time I served, I was stationed aboard the USS Velo Golf. In 1993, we commissioned the Villa Gulf. I am one of the original crew members. The Navy has bestowed an honorary title on us and will always be known as a plank owner. This is my Jeep, the Villa Gulf. It is the third Jeep I have owned so far. It's a 2017 Wrangler Sport Unlimited. This has been a project in the works for almost three years. This Jeep has gone through many phases in the short time that I've owned it. There have been times I have double dipped on mods, even after carefully researching it the first time. My piece of advice when planning out your Jeep, especially when you're working on a budget, think how it looks now. What will be the first thing you modify? If you do bumpers first and then they look good with the current setup of the stock fenders, think how those bumpers will look if you go with a skinnier fenders or even a fender delete. I made that mistake. I first went with a set of bumpers that matched up with the stock fenders. Later, after thinking I would forever keep those fenders, I switched them out with the skinnier Smitty built fenders and the front bumper looked odd. So now, I went with a stubby bumper that looks better with the aftermarket fenders. Trust me, Jeep mods can be expensive, and it can be really more expensive if you have to purchase the same mods twice. And men, listen carefully. You can eventually upset the wife when you have to replace a perfectly good working winch with the one that matches the new bumpers. She still doesn't get it. So really, carefully plan your design. But we all know, building a Jeep is never ever complete. It's always an ongoing and never ending process. With that being said, Let's go over what I have done so far to the Vela Golf. Starting with the lift, I first went with a two inch Mopar lift when I first bought the Jeep in 2017. I was running 35s. I still currently run the one and a half inch Spider Tracks wheel spacers. Almost three years later, I finally upgraded to a four inch Mopar lift and went with 37s. I run Cooper Discovery STT Pros 37, 12 and a half by 17. I have installed a set of front and rear tubular fender flares from Rough Country. Underneath are the inner fenders, both front and rear. I also have installed a set of Smittybilt SRC rock rails. Both the fenders and rock rails have been lined with Lionx XS350. This is their military grade of protective coating from our friends down at Lionx of South Tampa. I've upgraded the tie rod and drag link and went with the heavy duty kit from Terraflex. The axle tube seals have been upgraded to Alloy USA, a rugged ridge brand. These upgraded seals are designed to keep water, mud, dirt, and other types of crud from entering into the axle housing. During the fall of 2019, I upgraded my stock gears and went with a 488 gear ratio. I chose the G2 brand and have noticed an incredible difference in climbing. As of this recording, I'm still not equipped with lockers, but those are in the plans as I continue this build. Other areas that I have done some modifications have been adding a spider web shade. It's a high quality mesh that covers from the front all the way to the back and helps cut down on those Florida sun rays. You can't really see it due to the spare tire, but I installed a Smitty Built Pivot HD tire carrier. On top of the spare given to us for the show by our good friends down at Four Wheel Parts is a Smittybilt iRack 2 Intelligent Rack. These racks are really great and useful and can be used to mount an assortment of accessories. On mine, I have a two gallon Rotopax gasoline pack with a locking mount. Inside, I have Bartek seat covers for the front and rear. These are really nice and comfortable seat covers. I especially like how it has the stitching that allows for multiple Molly pouches on the side and rear. While on the trails, I use a simple two-way radio just like this one from Midland. I also run a CB. 
I have a simple Uniden Pro 520 XL Pro Series that has 40 channels. It is attached to a rugged ridge mount that mounts directly to the factory footman loop. Given to us by Bulletproof Mounting Solutions is this great smartphone and GoPro mount. The arm is made of carbon fiber and Kevlar. In the back I've installed a security tailgate enclosure that was given to us by our friends over at Tuffy Security Products. This enclosure can hide and protect things you want hidden away from the outside. On top of the enclosure, the deck makes for a great storage rack. Recently I found a great solution for properly stowing and tucking the soft top in a neat tight package. JTOPS USA was so kind to us for this boot. Made from premium nylon reinforced Herculite, a commercial grade vinyl, the boot is designed for extreme outdoor conditions. Going back underneath, I have installed a Flowmaster Outlaw exhaust system. I haven't done any rock climbing after this install yet, but in my research, I've read a lot of owners learn the hard way to take their exhaust tips off. Ending out the features to the Vela Golf are the second set of bumpers that I've installed. For the bumpers, I've installed Smittybilt XRC Gen 2. These are really great bumpers. Fog lights are in my plan I have yet to install on the front bumper. Even though I don't get to see it, my favorite part of the rear bumper are the integrated LED backup lights. The last part that ties this nice package together is the Smittybilt XRC Gen 3 winch. I have the 12K with synthetic rope. This winch is really awesome. A redesigned remote that has a built-in flashlight and a dual magnet mount. To prevent damage from overload in the motor and line, it has an LED indicator that provides you information. On the actual winch, there is a light that illuminates your line as it is being reeled in or out. Another really great feature to this winch is an auxiliary 12 volt power port so you can use accessories without popping the hood. Now that you have a better understanding of my Jeep with my current setup, and that I've got a major craving to go for a ride, come on out with me and let's go for a ride. Coming up later in this episode, we'll be talking to Derek Ferguson of LineX of South Tampa about the services they provide for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. So we're on our way. We are headed to Citrus Wildlife Management Area and Citrus is located outside of the Inverness and Lecanto area of Florida. Citrus WMA, west of Inverness, Florida, is located in both Citrus and Hernando counties consisting of nearly 50,000 acres. This wildlife management area is one of seven large tracts that make up the Withlacoochee State Forest. Citrus offers many types of recreational activities besides trail riding. You can hunt, fish, view wildlife, camp, hike, bike, picnic, and go horseback riding. If you ride out the Citrus, the FWC requires that your vehicle is street legal, tagged, and registered. The FWC suggests that you contact the local offices for permits if you are in a group of six vehicles or more. Well, everybody, we finally made it to the Citrus, and here we are. So I came in through the south side of Citrus, and we're gonna be going up Trail 13 and making our way around. With over 50,000 acres here, we won't be able to cover everything in this episode, so I invite you to come on out if you've never been here and drive around and explore. Let's get going. So as we drive up Trail 13, we're going to be heading up to Trail 22, which is our first trail that goes either east or west. And if you go all the way west or go to the left, that'll take you to the very south end of Trail 15. And there's a nice little parking area there that uh, if you come out here with a group or with your family, and during lunchtime you want to take a break, uh, there's a set of yellow gates there and there's a walking path. Uh, now there's signs that it says do not enter or, or trail close, but that's uh, due to the actual driving trail, but you can walk down it and there's a whole set of caves down there that uh, makes for a really great a little adventure for some sightseeing. As you leave the parking area here at trail 15 and the 22 area, uh, we're heading up trail 15, we're going north and it's going to run into trail 20 which heads back west and um, going up 15 down down here at this south end it uh it has some off camper areas and you know you can get thrown around a little bit um but when we go up to trail 20 and 15 it's a huge popular area especially with those mud lovers um there's three three ways to go there's the left way, which sometimes it can be washed out. Um, there's the far right bypass, which is um, the way to go. 
if you don't want to get stuck, which is, you guessed it, right in the middle. And if it's been raining really, really hard, oh yeah, you're burying that vehicle, no matter if you're a truck, SUV, Jeep, or even a tank. Uh, I've personally witnessed um, a lot of people getting out here and getting stuck. And uh, it, makes for, it makes for a great show. So we're gonna drive through this here. And that's nothing. We're currently at Trail 14. I wanted to be clear on which Trail 14 that we're at. Trail 13 splits citrus nearly in half, so technically there are two Trail 14s. So we've now turned on to the most northern Trail 14, and we're going to be coming up on the first washout. It offers two sets of washouts that will allow you to do some really great technique climbing, or better known as going off camber. This is when you'll want to make sure your sway bars are disconnected. The reason for that is so you won't have any resistance and it makes for a far more enjoyable ride as the Jeep is clawing through the obstacles. Hope y'all enjoyed seeing that first washout area at Trail 14. I turned around, I'm now heading uh, up on 13 to go over to 11. Uh, we're gonna check out Trail 11 really quick and then finally get out of Citrus. And after we get out of Citrus, we're gonna head down to Brooksville, go to Coney Island Drive-In, check out their food joint. And then we're finally going to go see Derek Ferguson at Lion X of South Tampa and see what he's got going on. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, this is Derek with Lion X of South Tampa and I've got my buddy Dan here. We're going to do a little demonstration between the high heat, high pressure Lion X polyurea system. This can spray to about 100 mils. Normally we spray to 120 mils in the truck bed for the best protection but I wanted it to be a fair fight, so I only did 100 mils on this can. Over here we have one of the cold, low pressure systems, or a solvent-based or paint type of system that's a, uh, advertised as a bed liner, but let's see if it really holds up. All right, Dan, I want you to take the Linex can and really try and crush it. See what you can do. See, give it all your might, man. Everything. Let's see how that can held up. Nothing? Nothing. Not a dent. All right. Just like Linex, that's what they say. Give it a crush. Yeah. Uh, just like Linex. Welcome back, everybody. So we're on Trail 11, and we're headed to a nice little play area here. It is located south of Trail 6 on the eastern part of Citrus. There are two paths you can take in this area that presents some more off-camera experience for you. We're making our way to the little play area on Trail 11. And uh, once we climb up this first area, we'll go ahead and turn around and head south and play on the second area. So I just went up the first washout and I turned back south and headed on the second play area. And I've been told that it is a 30 degree angle. So we're gonna have some off camera fun. I downloaded the Smitty Built Clinometer app from the Apple App Store. And we're gonna see what we're actually rolling at or leaning at, I should say. So right now it's about negative, about negative 30. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed our little outing here at Citrus. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to go down to Coney Island and try out a hot dog, grab a drink. So come along and follow me. Well folks, we're finally here, Coney Island Drive-In. Founded in 1960 by the Gertrude family. Local legend has it that while filming a movie in Inverness in 1961, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, he ate here. Let's go try one. So 
once a month, they do an Elvis show here under the oak trees, but don't tell my mom. I think she still thinks that he's alive. So I got a Chicago dog and a Pepsi. We're gonna give it a try. That, that is really good. Very good. I'm usually a mustard ketchup guy, but this is very good. It's got a nice, ooh, it's got some heat to it. Anyway, come check out Coney Island in Brooksville. Check it out before you ride at Citrus. Also, do that if you're gonna do a night ride because that is an adventure, doing Citrus at night. Or when you get done doing a full day on the trails, come on out and hit this place up. So coming up, we're finally gonna head up Derek down at Lion X in South Tampa. We're gonna see what he's got going on. Don't go away. Since 2004, Line X of South Tampa has been serving our local Tampa Bay communities with protective Line X coatings and cutting edge off-road accessories, all installed by technicians who know what it takes to provide the best protection for your vehicles and the right accessories to succeed on any off-road adventure. We give you the ability to take your vehicle beyond the mundane, knowing it can handle even the most extreme conditions. With Line X of South Tampa, you know you're getting powerful protection, the best parts, and top-notch services for whatever comes your way. Welcome to Lion X of South Tampa. I'm here with Derek Ferguson, yeah. owner of Lion X of South Tampa. Thank you for joining us, Derek. Oh, now, Derek there's a lot of people that say that just Lion X does protective coverings and coatings. What else services do you provide? Yeah, Lion X of South Tampa, we're a full accessory shop. So we do everything from wheels, tires, lift kits, bumpers, all of the accessories, all of the major accessories for trucks, Jeeps. We also do things for fleet vehicles. So we do all of the shelving units, bulkheads, ladder racks, toolboxes. We're trying to be that one-stop shop for all of the dealers that are out there selling vehicles and all of our retail customers. So anything that you can think of from customization with Linex, we're doing color matching, we can do um, metal flake in the exteriors to uh, just about anything that you can think of. If, if it can be out there, we can Linex it, we can coat it. So it's the protective coatings for bed liners, for bumpers, for you know, like the rock sliders that we did on the Jeep. So just about everything. And as you can see behind us, we're even doing an excavator. We're doing the boom and we're doing that in a red color match and the cab's gonna be a black. So, and then we've got a Jeep over here that we're doing a full exterior, interior in the colors. So just about everything out there. Now we've met up a couple times before and you've done some tests. Why were you, he's lined a soda can <laughs> yes. and we did stress tests with, with the other brand mm -hmm. and Linex does really hold up. Now, you taught me something the other day. You were going to uh, line X uh, a customer's boat deck. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait a minute, usually those old bass boats are made with plywood. I said, will that stick yep. to it? And you're like, yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. In fact, um, wood, fiberglass, we can stick to any of those type of substrates. Um, to stick to them very well. We've got a company local here in Tampa that does a lot of cases for shipping, um, high AV equipment uh, for production companies and Linex is a great exterior coating for that. And they can also do color matches on that. So if they need a shipping container that's black, we can do black to reds, whites, any colors out there. Perfect. So what are we gonna be doing today? You're installing what on a, on a vehicle? We were installing a deck system. It's a drawer system, storage system for inside of a, a truck. And uh, it's something where you still have the usable space of your normal truck bed. Um, and it's probably about a foot and a half high in the truck bed with some drawers that roll all the way out, very durable, Great product out there. I think it won some awards in SEMA, so um, we're about to install one today. All right, folks, we're going to uh, get out of Derek's way and his team. We're going to let them do the installation. Uh, we're going to grab some footage of that. So stick around, see how it's done, and we're going to see what it looks like when it's all done. Derek, Sounds thank good. you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank all you. Right.
I want to thank Derek of Lion X for taking the time to talk with us today. A very big thank you to our promotional partners who helped me make this episode happen. For all of you watching, be sure to look down below and on the window, click on the subscribe button. Next episode, we'll be doing a true Florida back road stop as we venture out to the old Richland General Store in Webster. And then we're going to take a road trip north to the Yulee Sugar Mills Historic State Park in Helmasassa. Until then, continue exploring Florida one trail at a time. Stomp on.